What is up, everybody? Welcome to our box opening of the new Corset 2020 set. I am very, very excited to be opening this box. Uh, this is sponsored by, of course, our great friends over at Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles. They are a fantastic local game store here in South Carolina. If you're in the area, uh, around Charlotte area, definitely swing by just literally 20 minutes south and you will hit uh, Rock Hill, which is where Grand Slam is. They're an absolutely fantastic store. Please, please check them out. A great group of people uh, and they definitely helped us out as they continue to do uh, with this box. So very, very excited to be opening this. Uh, again, please check out their link also. Uh, they do have a Facebook group down below. Uh, so if you're interested in joining that, you can do so there. Um, but, of course, the main event, we finally get to open a set, uh, or a box, excuse me, of Corset 2020. Uh, unfortunately, getting this to you a little bit late, uh, there was actually an issue, well, uh, multiple issues, I should say. Uh, one, shipping did not come in as expected. Uh, we actually, uh, with, with Grand Slam shipment in particular, uh, they shipped them a day late, uh, so they were actually late on even pre-release. Again, not their fault at all. It was entirely down to shipping, uh, which is very, very unfortunate, uh, but there's not really much they can do about that. They did handle it very well, uh, and pre-release was fantastic. Also, though, uh, I was actually out uh, on vacation this weekend, so I didn't get a chance to stop by the store uh, and see anything. We are very quickly going to swing through the commons, nothing too crazy, uh, and then we'll probably take a better look at the uncommons and rares. First one here is Chandra's Regulator. And then we also have an Agonizing Siphon as our foil, uh, of course our land, and I absolutely love these new tokens. I have already opened one of the boxes I received, uh, solely because I just wanted to have an, a, a good feel for what this set actually felt like to open. Uh, and honestly, these tokens feel amazing. They're fantastic. Absolutely love them. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention, was that uh, supposedly, and I, I unfortunately I didn't find this article on a on a review, uh, but I was looking for it and I, I wish I could have seen it. Ooh, there we go, Chandra, Acolyte of Flame, uh, very very good card. And then again that fantastic token. Uh, apparently foils are going to be more uh, prevalent in this set. Now I don't know that for sure. I was not able to confirm. Uh, which I should have. I do apologize. I just didn't get the opportunity. Uh, but um, that is what uh, I've been hearing at the very least. And considering the first box opening, it does seem like they're a little bit more frequent. It doesn't seem like uh, it's it's definitely not every pack or anything like that. But I did get a number of good foils, uh, which I was not expecting. I believe in the first box, I actually got a foil of Johnny. Ooh, here we go. A mythic Kethis of the Hidden Hand. Absolutely love this card. I think this is going to be a really good one for Commander as a lot of these cards will be, to be honest. Uh, so many of the cards in this set are going to be great for Commander, in my opinion. Uh, but, so, uh, the point here is that uh, as you're opening this set, I would say it's probably safe to assume you're going to get a few extra foils than you're probably used to. Uh, we'll see, obviously. I only have, I've literally only opened one box, so I don't want to go too crazy in saying that, but uh, it did seem like it just on that initial box opening. Uh, and honestly, the card quality, everything seems really, really great so far. Uh, I've not had any uh, issues with the foiling or anything like that. Obviously, I did just open the box, but uh, the foiling actually looks really, really good in this set. Um, it probably doesn't come across very well on camera, but um, it actually looks to be a little bit higher quality than we have seen, at least in recent uh, sets. Um, there's another Chandra Novice Pyromancer. Really interesting that Chandra got three uh, Flood of Tears is our rare. Uh, three Planeswalker cards. It does make sense. The set is a little bit more based around her, but um, still just kind of interesting. I do remember, uh, and we talked about this on the podcast, I thought this was hilarious uh, that Mark Rosewater actually ended up reposting or saying something about um, the, uh, the three Chandras because they were obviously the first card spoiled. <clears throat> Uh, a lot of people were expecting that to be, uh, to, to see the three Planeswalker thing for all of the Planeswalkers. Obviously, since we have War of the Spark, we've all been very used to uh, uncommon Planeswalkers and all over the place. But, uh, ooh, Bag of Holding and then a Foil uh, retru Retributive Wand. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, but yeah, and so he actually had to post saying, you know, no, this isn't going to be the case. This is just based on Chandra, therefore... Uh, we gave her three Planeswalker cards, which are all really, really fun. 
Uh, I don't know uh, how many of you guys watching were able to pre-release. Ooh, second mythic, Cavalier of Gales. Absolutely love this cycle. We did talk pretty extensively about them on the podcast episode last week. Uh, so definitely suggest checking that out. Really, really great cards. Very, very sweet. Uh, Noxious, I, I believe, also did a video with all five. Uh, or, yeah, I think all five of them in one deck, and it was hilarious. Uh, and there we go, Cavalier of Dawn. Uh, next Mythic, we're already up to three, and a foil uh, Anvil Rot Raptor. Uh, very, very cool. And the emblem for Chandra, that's nice. Uh, but yeah, so really, really interesting stuff. Um, I do hope some of you got out to uh, play in the pre-release. Again, I was on vacation, so unfortunately I missed it. Uh, I felt really, really bad about that, actually. Icon of Ancestry is a good one, too. Uh, and then uh, Brightwood Tracker is our rare there, or our foil, excuse me. Um, I do hope a lot of you got out to pre-release uh, and had a fantastic weekend with that. If you have any decks to share or even just stories or uh, fun little tidbits of info that you uh, picked up from this, uh, this pre-release, please let me know. Uh, Nightpack Ambrosher and then a foil planes. There we go. Uh, please let me know in the comment section. I'd absolutely love to hear about all those stories. Uh, Pre-release in particular is such a fun time for so many people because obviously it's the re release of a new set. It's kind of a level playing field for a lot of people. Uh, and it's just an, a fun time to hang out, uh, maybe play on the midnight pre-release and stay up super late. Bishop of Wings, a very good one. Uh, and uh, just hang out with some friends and have a good time, play some magic. Uh, I, um, again, unfortunately missed it, but uh, I did get to uh, play a good bit before I left for vacation on Arena. I think I played something like six, maybe five or six uh, sealed pools uh, on Arena. And honestly, I could not be more excited about this set. I think it was very, very fun to play. A uh, lot of really fantastic synergies uh, that I found and honestly, in a lot of ways, uh, it does still, I mean, it is a core set. It's a lower powered set in general. Uh, ooh, Marauding Rafter, fantastic. Uh, and lo look at this. I mean, these tokens are beautiful, guys. Uh, but it, again, it is a lower powered set. It is a core set. But uh, in a lot of ways, some of these interactions felt much more uh, synergistic than you would expect, I would say, from a core set. Uh, even just small things felt really, really awesome. So very much enjoyed uh, playing this. Brought back is our uh, rare here. Uh, and again, those tokens are just fantastic. Uh, probably about halfway through the box now. Uh, but anyway, absolutely loved playing it. I hope that you guys are enjoying your time playing this. And if you haven't gotten the chance to quite yet, uh, then please, please do make it a priority to get out there and play a little bit. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, I have every uh, intention... Uh, of jumping on arena again, maybe even playing over at Grand Slam if I get the opportunity very soon, uh, and and drafting or uh, playing more sealed. Uh, as honestly, this is just such a fun set. Uh, Gargus Vicious Watcher is our rare there, and then a foil Rabid Bite. Uh, and again, you'll you notice it, it does feel like we're getting a few extra foils here. Um, I, I don't know the stats. I don't know the numbers on that. It just it seems to be the case. Uh, very unofficial way of saying that, but uh, overall fantastic. Ooh, there we go. A fourth mythic of Omnath, Locus of the Royal. Uh, I did run up against that card uh, in a sealed pool, and it absolutely destroyed me, uh, unfortunately. Uh, actually... I say that. It did eventually. It took a little bit of time uh, just because at the time that they played it, I was in a bit of a winning position, uh, and then they dropped that, and I just could not do anything. Foil Thought Distortion, again, pulling all the foils. Uh, but I absolutely love Omnath. Fantastic card. Uh, definitely a game-ender uh, long-term for, for sealed of any kind, uh, or limited of any kind, excuse me. Uh, let's see. We got Starfield Mystic. Absolutely love the art on that card. Uh, truly, truly beautiful. Um, anyway, so, uh, in the first box, I did want to mention a few of the cards that I pulled there. Uh, I did get two Ajani's, actually. One was foil, one was not. Uh, but, ooh, there we go. Fifth, uh, Mythic Cavalier of Flame. We are now three out of five on the, uh, on the, the, uh, Cavaliers here, which is great. Uh, I did pull um, the Black Cavalier in the first box, and I want to say one more, but I don't remember if it was the green or if it was another one of these uh, that we've pulled in this box. Uh, but absolutely fantastic cycle. Love it. Dread Presence, a very good card as well. 
Uh, one that we're seeing hit a lot of, like, kind of Esper value decks. Uh, it's it's sort of like a triggers deck. It's actually really sweet. Uh, I tried playing it a little bit on Arena. However, I didn't get a lot of time with it, uh, unfortunately. Oh, there we go. A Foil Dread Presence, as well as a Thunderkin Awakener. Uh, fantastic. I love that. Um, but uh, along with that, unfortunately, I didn't get any of the cool, uh, like, multicolor legendaries that I was hoping to get. Uh, I've gotten, obviously, one or two here, Omnath, as well as the, uh, the uh, Legendary Matters uh, kind of one, uh, which I absolutely love. Oh, this guy I pulled and sealed as well. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, definitely a game ender. Uh, but I didn't really pull many of the other legendary, uh, multicolor cards, gold cards in, um, in the first box. And I was kind of disappointed by that. Uh, but I mean, they're all mythic. I mean, it makes perfect sense. Not super upset about it. Just, uh, was hoping to pull one or two. That's all. Uh, but seems like we're making it up a little bit here. Rotting Regisar. Very interesting card in my opinion. Um, I feel like that's a card you could really abuse. Uh, it, it just seems like the kind of thing that you would want in like a, a reanimator strategy or something along those lines, but who knows. Uh, Goblin Ringleader is a card I actually meant to talk about as well. Uh, At Atomis, uh, a big sphinx, uh, as well as a foil fry. Uh, so the Goblin Ringleader, I did want to mention because uh, we talked about it a little bit on the podcast uh, and I do find it to be a very important uh, card because now that means we can get uh, a more powerful goblin in uh, modern as well as obviously in standard. Now, I don't know that this makes goblins good enough for modern. I definitely don't necessarily think that. Uh, I do think that it's something that can definitely be played with. Very, very fun to be able to dig out all these goblins and then just start playing them, which is great. Dungeon Geist, also a really cool reprint. Uh, but, um, I do think it makes it much, much more viable, uh, in standard just to be able to pull out a bunch of these goblins and then start, uh, start playing them for extra value. Start playing two, maybe even three a turn would be fantastic. Leyline of Abundance, uh, also meant to talk about those, which we will in just a sec, but regardless, I, I think goblins is going to be a fun deck just to play with. I don't necessarily think it's going to be any kind of tier one deck by any means, but, uh, definitely, definitely a fun one. Leyline of Combustion, uh, and then Aerial Assault Foil. Uh, I did pull in the first one, that's what I wanted to mention, uh, I believe three of the Ley Lines, two of which, uh, are the best, in my opinion. Leyline of the Void, uh, and then of course Leyline of Sanctity, which is probably the best one. Again, Chandra, Novice Pyromancer, great. Shared Summons, uh, but again, absolutely love, uh, all the reprints in this set. The Ley Lines, fantastic. I love the new cycles with the Cavaliers, as well as some of these legendary gold cards. Just absolutely fantastic. Uh, let's see. Mystic Forge is our rare, and then a Foil uh, Fortress Crab. Uh, definitely feels like we're getting a lot more foils, but we are down to the last two packs, so let's see what we can get. Hopefully we can end on something really, really spicy. Uh, we will see. Let's get through. Uh, Agent of Treachery. Uh, not super exciting, but not bad. Uh, and then our last car, our last pack here, excuse me, let's see what we get. Uh, only one foil rare. We did get the foil mythic in the first box, uh, which was really, really cool, but hopefully we get something good here. Uh, Masterful Replication, a powerful card in limited, however, not necessarily the best elsewhere. Uh, so finishing off this box, we did get five uh, mythic rares, uh, two, uh, three of which, excuse me, were the Cavaliers, and then we got Omnath and Kethys. Uh, as well as a very high number of foils, uh, as you can see. Uh, quite the number of foils, at least it seems like. Uh, as well as one foil rare, and then quite a stack of really, really good cards. So, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this box opening video. Please, please, if you did, make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. Also, please make sure to follow the uh, Grand Slam Facebook group down in the description below. They have a link right there. Go ahead, click on it, check them out. If you're in the area, we would really love to have you down there. Uh, I know I go in every once in a while. Will goes in every once in a while uh, for pre-releases, things like that. We're going to do our best to make sure we're down there for those. Uh, they're just such a good time, and that group is really, really growing. Uh, I know this time they had a really, really good turnout as well. So very, very happy to be working with them. Thank you so much to them for this box. Really appreciate it. Please make sure as well, as always, to subscribe uh, if you are interested in seeing more awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next box opening video.